die jess chun a process by which animals take in break down absorb and eliminate food from their bodies it occurs in four steps ingestion or the taking in of food to the digestive tract then mechanical and chemical digestion that is the breaking of food down into smaller chunks and then the chemical breakdown of bonds between molecules within the food third is the movement of those broken down molecules into the actual body by a process known as absorption and the elimination of products that are not absorbed from the digestive tract these steps have become more nuanced and complex over time as animals have evolved to become more effective digesters peripherans such as sponges have the most simplistic digestive tract in the animal kingdom small cells on the sponge's interior shaped like this have long flagella which beat over and over again generating a current that pushes the water from the outside to the inside of the sponge and then up through the top and then along the edges of those cells are these collar like structures that trap uh, small microorganisms that are drifting by on this current the beauty of this digestive tract lies in its simplicity because it is just made of single cells doing the work rather than an entire system if this sponge were to break apart the parts that break off could become their own sponges with a fully functional digestive tract in each one it also doesn't take very much energy to run this relatively simplistic digestive tract with only one cell type but there's a disadvantage sponges can only eat organisms that are smaller than their cells so while a little cyanobacterium would be small enough to get caught by the cells a larger organism like a baby fish which is multicellular wouldn't get caught because it's too big so the disadvantage for sponges is that they can't eat organisms larger than a cell but nadarians like this hydra can like their relatives jellyfish coral and anemones hydras have a body shown here and long tentacles with stinging cells on the tip and they'll grab a food item sting it and bring it down to their mouth at the center of their body so here you can see a bit of prey that has already been grabbed by one of these tentacles and stuffed down through this opening and here it is in this sac then inside the sac which is called a gastrovascular cavity the walls of the cavity as you can see blown up right here those cells can release digestive enzymes onto the food and the food can get broken down inside the gastrovascular cavity and then absorbed into the walls where it can actually be used this provides a new advantage a nadarian can eat much larger organisms than a sponge can but this system is not perfect because the hole at this end serves two purposes it is a mouth anus food goes in and waste comes out of the same spot this causes traffic problems and it also means that the nadarians can't sequentially ingest and then digest and then absorb and then eliminate it's all happening in the same area in opposite directions an obvious disadvantage it wasn't until phylum nematoda evolved that the complete digestive tract appeared these round worms have a mouth at one end and then a complete digestive tract running all the way through the middle and an anus at the other the whole long tube is sometimes called an alimentary canal the advantage is quite evident now the mouth and the anus are separated and the food can move in one direction sequentially through the steps of digestion however there are disadvantages constructing a long complex digestive system like this requires more energy than just making a simpler gastrovascular cavity and much more energy than just using individual cells for a digestive tract so it might be a functionally useful digestive tract but it's also energetically expensive and it's even more energetically expensive to generate digestive tracts like our own that have not only one long tube but also specialized organs along the length of the tube such as the esophagus the stomach the large intestine the rectum etc all the organisms in the phylum chordata have multiple organs along the length of their tract which requires much energy to build however chordates can eat some of the most complex large and even toxic foods because they have such specialized digestive tracts so 
there is an advantage to this energetically demanding piece of machinery. Does this make our digestive tract, with all of its specialized organs, better than the digestive tracts of the Nadarians and the peripherans? These two have been around for 400 and 500 million years respectively, whereas our digestive tract has only been around for at most 50,000 years. These energy-efficient models have definitely withstood the test of time. However, they can't break down some of the foods that we can break down. So we'll see if the human digestive tract can withstand the test of time and, and continue to exist for millions of years.